What is up everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be looking at a brand new watch for you, that, well, brand new. This is a vintage watch that we've, we've discussed in one of our videos. This is an Omega um, reference, 1661117. It's a day date from the 1970s, which I think is really beautiful. Uh, if I can get it to focus here so you can see it. Um, if not, you'll see it in a couple, couple seconds here. Um, but it's a really cool um, watch from 1972, manufactured in 1972, gifted in 1974, with a cool little bit of provenance. Um, so I'm excited to jump into this watch, give you some details on the reference, the movement that it's running on, and also the place that um, the individual. I won't spoil it, but the provenance of this watch, which is an overused word, but it's a cool, cool little story that I want to tell you. So without um, rambling on more, let's get into it. To call a watch untouched is a big statement. Collector collectors are finding it harder and harder to find watches that truly have not been polished, cleaned, or altered from how it, be, how it came from the factory. So it's hard to state the, that the Omega that you see in front of you is untouched, but to my eye, this is exactly what this uh, day date is. This watch is the reference 1660117. In um, 1972. The reference is part of the Genève line of watches that Omega produced along with other lines such as the Seamaster, DeVille, and Constellation lines that many of you have heard of. Many collectors will point to the Seamaster and Constellation lines as um, as being lines of watches um, that are more collectible mainly due to the variations in dials and cases and lug designs, collectors are able to kind of explore different models a little bit more broadly. Um, the Genève line has often been spoken about as being very consistent in the designs that they have, that they use for, for their watches. Um, and so on the outset, the, this Genève might kind of fall into the trap of being too similar to other models. But what I think makes this model really unique is obviously when you when you see this watch is the originality the patina and the provenance of this watch so to give you a little bit of detail about this reference so then 1660117 is an automatic watch that was introduced by omega in 1972. the reference was produced throughout the 1970s and featured an automatic movement and read the day date day and date complication that you see at three o'clock. The dials of these watches um, obviously have the complications at three o'clock, um, which is a traditional location for where these are. This version has this really beautiful uh, champagne dial with applied hour markers and loom plots. The loom is also applied to the hands, which you can see on the minutes and, and hours hands here. The Omega logo and name are not applied, but they're printed on the dial. Normally towards six o'clock where you see this logo, there would be the word Genève printed to indicate which line of watch it was part of. Um, but instead we have this C-shaped logo that's printed. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to the provenance of this watch. Um, on the description alone, the watch falls into the way collectors think of the Genève line. Very, very similar to many of the watches that were produced previously. Um, and, you know, some might say somewhat, uh, they could, you could describe it as being a boring watch, but I think this watch is anything but that. Um, digging a little bit deeper, um, we can talk a little bit about the patina. So, as you can see, as I sort of turn this watch around, you can see that it has this really, really unique patina. The color of this watch is really what 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 takes it. So, the case is yellow, ten cold, ten or is yellow gold plated, but the yellow has turned this really unique sort of patina color. Which I will say, patina is subjective. I think we all know that that is the case. Either the patina of the dial or the patina of the case collectors like or they don't, and it can vary so wildly by collectors. Some people like things that are. Um, 
in pristine condition. Some people like a little bit of patina where they can see the aging of a dial or a case. Some people like a little bit more of a, a unique look at, at, um, at the term patina. But looking at the patina on this case, you can see this darker color that may not be appealing to too many people. But what's really cool, and I'm hope hopefully I'm showing you this, is as you sort of move the watch a little bit, um, you can see that the watch has a couple of different colors. Um, and it creates a really unique color. So you might see patches of this, this, this case where you see a blue hue in certain lights. You might also see sort of a like a red hue um, that's developed. Um, part, parts of the lugs and the tops of the cage has sort of a reddish hue um, that really adds an additional layer and contrasts really nicely with this really pristine uh, dial. If you move to the crystal, and, and I think this is something that people might say, is how has the case of this watch aged the way that it has and the dial has remained fairly pristine? There, might, there must be something going on with this watch. Well, if you look at the um, crystal of this watch, these crystals were typically replaced, especially, um, especially because these scratch very, very easily. And so a lot of the times the crystals that you get are replacements. But Omega made a way where you can actually identify if the Omega came from or was originally produced by Omega, where essentially at the center of the watch, you can see the Omega logo on the underside of the crystal. And if you pick up a loop and look at this watch, you'll see that Omega logo looking at you. So I think I can, with fair, some certainty, say that the crystal of this watch is probably original. Now, that doesn't extend to the... Um, to the dial, of course, um, but with the originality of the case, the hands, likely the crystal, you kind of have to say that the same thing would probably go for the, um, the dial. Of course, subject to your own personal um, opinions. Fortunately, I can't show you where the, where the Omega logo is, but um, you'll just have to believe me that it's there. So moving on to a very important part, I apologize for hitting the camera there. Very important part about this watch is the caliber that it's running on. The watch is running on the caliber, um, the caliber 1020 movement. The movement was based on the Omega caliber 1010 movement, which only had a date function, but the 1010 basically added that additional, um, additional day function to the watch. The movement was actually first introduced in 1972, which is cool because um, it was produced in 1972 and or introduced in 1972 and then produced until 1984, meaning that the, the movement in this watch was likely one of the first uh, 1020s that was ever produced that came out of the factory, which is quite cool. The movement has the very typical rose gold tone finish to it, which is actually a ca copper alloy, um, something that some people, uh, there's a little bit of a misconception about that, um, which I thought was quite cool. some more of this watch here for you. Um, the movement, um, the, the, the 1020s are actually, the 10, really the 1010 and the 1020 movement is known for being um, somewhat of a, a difficult movement for watchmakers to manage. Set in the tensions on the canyon pinion, which is the piece that drives that the watch's hands um, to rotate, can be difficult um, because if you set it too tightly, um, it can cause the teeth in the minute wheel to, sh to shear off. And if it's too, the tension is too little, the hands won't actually be able to move through the date uh, changes. So it can be a little bit of a temperamental movement um, for watchmakers when they're sort of maintaining these watches. Um, but once done properly, the watch actually has a quick set date function for both the day and the date complication, which is really useful. Um, piece of watchmaking for wear. So essentially, if you pull the crown out one position, you can advance the um, the day of the month. And then if you pull it out two positions and you um, wind the hands in the opposite direction, um, it'll change that day function. So a really important part, and I'd like to zoom up for this, um, is the provenance of this watch, um, as I mentioned sort of in the introduction. The stainless steel case back actually has this really cool hand engraving. I'm gonna see if I can get it for you here. Um, 
it has this hand engraving that says for loyal service peanut heinous 1974 continental canco so the inscription likely points to the sale and gifting of the watch in 1974 to an individual who worked at continental canco um, Continental Canco was an American producer of metal containers and packaging based in Stamford, Connecticut. It was founded in 1904 and interestingly held, helped during World War II by building aircrafts, aircraft parts in their manufacturing plants. They were even involved in an antitrust lawsuit in 1956 when they tried to acquire the third largest producer of glass containers. Most of the company today was, or most of the company was later sold, and there really isn't an existence of this company um, anymore today. So, of course, the natural question that one would ask is, who is this individual, Peanut Heinous? I spent a considerable amount of time trying to research who this individual was, and unfortunately, I really couldn't find a record. There were many people with the names Ed Heinous, Mike Heinous, John Heinous, um, who... Uh, who you know uh, I, I was able to find but unfortunately the nickname peanut was just something that i couldn't connect with continental canco um so unfortunately i'm not sure who the individual was um the the individual that i did find worked for steel companies and doctors who had something like 16 pa uh, patents um but none of them really seemed to have a connection to, to this company um, nevertheless, I, I really think that the reason why this watch was gifted makes it really special. It was gifted for loyal service, and these gifts are seldomly given today. Most of the time, you're really you're going to get a pat on the back or um, something like that. Um, and so I think it really defines a period of watch, watch collecting, anywhere from something like the 40s to the 70s, where this was sort of a, a really um, important tradition that many companies uh, many companies uh, did. I think it, it's a beautiful bit of history that adds this really ex unique um, looking uh, watch that's in really great um, original condition. So of course I will try this watch on for you because um, I'm sure that is something that you would like to see. So I will try this watch on so you can see it on the wrist. Um, let me just zoom out quickly here. It's a 35 millimeter case. Um, which to, to some is going to fit well, to some it won't. Um, but I, for me, I think it fits really nicely on my wrist. Um, so if you want to, here I'll actually zoom in just a little bit. So if you see it on my wrist here, you can see that the lugs are shorter than maybe some of the other watches that I've looked at on the channel. Um, but a really nice fit, a really nice um, look to it. Quite a uh, quite a unique looking piece um, with the way that it's patinaed and especially with the logo down here. Um, and I think is a is a nice a nice piece of history um, if you're kind of into collecting those types of uh, those types of watches. Really, really nice. Um, yeah, 35 millimeters doesn't fit everyone, but it definitely fits my wrist. Um, so, as I mentioned, I think it's a really nice watch for what it kind of stands for, which is loyal service to companies and really acknowledging the types of work that people do for companies. And um, it's something that doesn't happen uh, as often today. Um, but it's a nice reminder that this was a tradition and... Um, it's a wonderful way to celebrate someone's contributions to an organization, especially because this individual likely worked for this company for many, many years. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this Omega. It's such a beautiful story to think um, about why this watch was gifted, the individual reward, and the fact that really uh, it's probably in the original condition that it came, original condition as in it's it's uh, not polished, not um, not being uh, you know messed with by by, by a watchmaker. Um, so just a cool bit of watchmaking history, in my opinion, and also a bit of history for the individual who got this watch. So um, nice story, really cool provenance. I really enjoyed it. So that is actually the end of um, the first four watches that we sort of discussed. Um, I guess four videos back. 
Um, so we've got another sec set of watches that we're going to be talking about soon. Um, so we'll, the next video that you can expect is actually just a, a brief overview on all the pieces that we've we've gotten in. One of the watches that I'm wearing actually, which I'm, I'm, I'm excited to get into, but we've got four really cool pieces that are all unique in their, in their own ways. So um, the watch roll will be, um, will be a little bit different going forward here, um, but I'm excited to jump into those pieces. And this is really, this is really what, what, what I love about this channel is to be able to feel and touch and show pieces that, that, are, that are interesting like this. Um, it's, it's what Life Nurse was always about. It was about the stories of the watches and the, the, that was what sort of gave it meaning, the history of the references, the movements that were used, perhaps where they came from. And so that was really um, my motivation with this, with this channel. So um, yeah, excited to get into these pieces. I'm looking forward to it, so stay tuned for that video. And um, yeah, if you wouldn't mind, do all the normal things on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think about this Omega in the comment section below. We'd love to, to hear about it. Check out the article on lifeandnurse.com where I speak about this reference. I, you know, obviously you can read it there as well. There'll be some more pictures there if you want to see the watch uh, just in, in, you know, photographs. Um, head to all our socials if you would like to. Share this watch, share this video with a friend who likes watches. And with that said, guys, thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.